Hey there, thanks for stopping by and do feel free to come on a wander with me. This is an art made for us video which means I go somewhere, take some photos and share them with you and hopefully we can get some creative juices flowing to make some art. This time I'm at Hadley Castle which is in Essex, England. I got there at about 8.30 in the morning so it was wonderfully quiet. Just me and the birds exploring the morning. Hadley Castle is managed by English Heritage, but as it is a smaller site with castle ruins, it's free to visit and open at any reasonable daylight hours. The castle was begun in about 1215 by Hubert de Burgh, but extensively fortified by Edward III during the Hundred Years' War, and as the king got older it became a favourite residence of his. The site overlooks the Essex marshes and there are lots of things to spot from hay bales to railway lines to boats on the estuary. It was a bright sunny morning and the sun was shining from behind the largest ruins meaning my camera sometimes struggled to do the whole scene justice. Which is more because I'm still learning this camera and as I couldn't see much of the screen anyway I didn't really know what footage I was getting at the time. I've done my best to lighten those sections a bit in the edit so that you can just see them a little bit better. Oh my gosh, it was windy though. It was blowing me about all over the place. <laughs> Luckily, it was a pretty warm wind, but it did mean that there was no point in me trying to talk to you directly on the day. All you can hear on the footage is <laughs> it was lovely though to step inside the biggest tower as the wind dropped for a moment and I could catch my breath for a little bit. At this point I should say I absolutely have a massive soft spot for ruins. I could take photos of them all day. I get a bit obsessed in finding different angles, textures, light and I love a good window or a doorway. As a side note, one of my favourite ever ruins to visit is Revo Abbey in Yorkshire. I think that one probably took the record for the most photos I ever took of a place. <laughs> I also enjoy the fact that these kinds of ruins, they're still always home to so much life in the nooks up high. The birds must love it in here. At this point I started to contemplate where I might sit down to try and make some art. Although the least windy place to sit was inside one of the towers, the stones were pretty knobbly to sit on <laughs> and I really wanted to sit somewhere that had a view of the towers. I could have plonked myself in the centre green space but that would have just been tempting the wind and it's hard to concentrate on painting when your hair is everywhere and you keep having to anchor down your stuff. Eventually I found a spot where the stables would have been where I could sit on the grass with my back against the wall and look towards the main tower. The wall kept a little bit of the wind at bay at least. I had brought my box of artful gouaches along I wanted to keep my bags light so instead of a sketchbook I stuck a couple of bits of canvas paper to a bit of cardboard. It's not that aesthetic I know but it was practical and it did the job nicely. I had a jar with some water in. Side note, the jar was from some M&S orange and cinnamon honey which was super yummy. I also had my Miss Peregrine's pouch with a random plastic thingy inside to act as my palette and some brushes. I did have a pencil with me but I decided to go straight in with the paints and to heck with the consequences. It's good to practice going straight in like this, making errors but leaving them on the page and either fixing them as you go or accepting them as part of the overall piece. 
I'm still figuring out how to mix the colours that I want in gouache and watercolour so I knew my painting wouldn't be accurate in its colours but I hoped I could get a bit of a sense of what was in front of me. As I was in full sun here though I was conscious of my camera overheating so I only filmed a couple of bits and soon enough I got too hot myself sitting there. I think I managed about 50 minutes before I called time on it. I could also feel some tickling on my arms and I had to keep knocking some bugs away. I think something was living in the wall I was leaning on, so it felt like I should move on. <laughs> and so with that I had one last mooch about and then headed back to the car. Thanks for a lovely morning Hadley Castle. Let's head back to the shed and make some art inspired by the photos. Remember, you can join in too if you'd like. These are just a few of the photos I took on my outing and you're welcome to use them as references for your own art adventures. You can find all of the photos in the gallery on my website, gemofthepen.com. There's a link in the description. Click on the reference gallery button, pop in the password, making together and go have a browse. So I'm back in the shed, it's the next day now and I'm glad I went yesterday to the castle because today rain is a coming. I'm just taking a look at the painting that I did while I was there and yeah it's not perfect, the colours aren't you know exact to real life because the castle was not pink. <laughs> but I like it, I like the fact that it's pink with some yellowy bits on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning when it comes to creating the right kind of colours, um, especially when I'm using gouache or say watercolours, but there are a lot of things to like in it I think. I mean yeah it's not the most dynamic of pictures, it could do I think with a bit more contrast and things like that, but yeah I was quite happy with the clouds actually. They don't look like much but I like the fact that they had a little hint of grey on them. Hmm. I feel like it captured a moment. I was in the moment and now it's done. And there's something I'd like to try with a couple of the photos that I took. I'm in a black and white mood today so I'm thinking of channeling those kind of mediums. So let's get on and do that. So I've got these two photos, I've printed them out, I've made them both black and white just because that's my mood today. I'm thinking of trying to kind of combine both together so to have a window in the centre and then to have some of these kind of coming into the design around it somehow. We'll see whether I carry on with that idea as it's going along or whether I abandon it entirely. So while Art Gemma is playing with pen and charcoal let's have a noodle on the art pond of the day which this time is when you create art do you want your viewers to see and feel what you see and feel in your art? I thought this was an interesting question because it taps into the communication elements of art. When we make art we're expressing ourselves in some way. It's a type of communication without words whether we ultimately share it with other people or not. So when you make art do you expect others will read it in the same way as you? Are you trying to express your feelings in a way which steers the viewer towards a specific understanding? Or do you expect viewers to ask questions and to interpret it differently? For a good long while I thought I wasn't a real artist because I felt like I had no strong message or concept to share in my art. I just wanted to create for creation's sake, to learn new things, to see what my hands could craft, to bring into being whatever was in my head. I didn't make art for other people, I made it for me, I still do by the way, and therefore it felt as if other people wouldn't be that interested in it anyway. Everything I've ever created which I am truly proud of, I made because it felt like I had to. Something inside me had something to express. And in the process of making, I never once thought about how other people may view it. At college, on an art course that I took as an adult, I had to create a project to show in a gallery. Now this was something hugely alien to me and I was forced to think about how people would view my artwork, how they might interpret it, whether the point of my artwork as I saw it would be understood by somebody outside of my head. 
I kind of hated having to think about creating in that way. I guess I feel a bit weird about making my artworks persuasive in any way. I don't mean persuasive in a manipulatory way. That's hard to say, which is why I said it really slowly. Manipulatory way. Although I do think some concept art can touch on that, but persuasive in that I was having to make choices based on cueing the viewer. I think it teetered too close into making the art require validation from the viewer and therefore tiptoed around the ever-present worries about outside judgment. There are some artists who can absolutely communicate an intentional feeling or message in their art and for some it can be an instinctive process. I think for those who just create from a passionate place and who channel their truth into their art without any thought of the outside or the end result, well, I think their viewers may well see and feel whatever that artist was feeling. For me personally, art and creativity are things which boost my soul. And I think part of the joy of art is in accepting how differently we all see it. Does it matter if a viewer doesn't feel the exact same as the artist? No, because they may take away something entirely unexpected and inspiring instead. So my long-winded answer to this art ponder question is no. I don't want my viewers to see and feel what I see and feel in my art. I just want them to see something. Something that speaks to them about who they are and what they might be feeling. So what do you think about this art ponder? I'll leave a comment about it below. Do hit reply and let's share thoughts. By the way, if any part of this video has been enjoyable or helpful so far, please do consider hitting the like button. It's free to do and it helps to expand this cosy creative bubble to other like-minded souls out there. So as you can see, this charcoal slash graphic pen hybrid drawing has sort of come together. It didn't end up exactly how I'd imagined it. Some of the charcoal areas didn't quite work as I wanted them to, but there were some bits I was really happy with, like the inner highlighted side of the window. I also cannot tell you how many times I drew a line with the pen and immediately smudged it with my hand or the eraser, forgetting that it needed to dry. Which is ultimately why the charcoal fades out a little further than planned, because I was trying to distract from all the smudges. Anywho, this is the final result. I'll be sticking it in my sketchbook. I also pop anything I make from these sessions up in my website gallery, and if you make anything creative inspired by the photos that I've shared, I'd love to see it and share it there too. It's always amazing to see how differently we interpret things and how varied our creativity can be. Thanks so much for watching this video and for staying to the end. <laughs> At the time of making this video, we are teetering on the brink of being a cosy community of 450 on this channel, which blows my tiny mind and I feel very privileged to have you here. Thank you to all of my subscribers for making happy with me. And if you just popped in for the first time today, thank you for taking a punt on this video. I hope you'll visit again. Keep making happy and I'll see you next time.